This is Twit. So Android 13, um, let's dive into this. And actually, Michelle, you wrote an article that kind of seemed to happen right about the time that 9 to 5 Google had an article. They kind of seemed to play hand in hand together. 9 to 5 Google had an article uh, last week that was about a detachable tablet form factor for the Nest Hub. Uh, for the Nest Smart Display, like a future Smart Display some coming sometime this year, I believe. And then you wrote about changes in Android 13 that seem to pave the way for this in some capacity. So I guess, tell us a little bit about what you discovered, because you were kind of the, the, you know, of all the sources that I read who who dive into, you know, what's going on in like future versions of Android, you're you're the most prolific. Like you really seem to get in there and really pick apart the morsels that a lot of other people are missing. What did you discover about Android 13? So whenever you look at new features in new versions of Android, um, whenever Google releases a developer preview, they announce a couple of changes. But oftentimes, there's a whole bunch of under-the-hood platform changes and new APIs and new features that they introduce, but they don't really tell you why they're introducing them. And if you dig deeper and peel back a few layers, you you kind of are able to piece together the why. And usually, it's related to some hardware or product they're planning to release. It's just the way it is. They, they try to do, they do a pretty good job of hiding, covering up that fact, but um, you come to these conclusions based on, you know, what product they're working on. And in this instance, 95 Google came out with a report that, as you said, um, detailed Google's Google Nest plan to release a detachable tablet slash um, smart display form factor. And um, coincidentally, I was piecing together a whole bunch of APIs and documenting a whole bunch of new features that were coming in Android 13. And I was like, hmm, a lot of these seem like they're perfectly suited specifically for this device and this form factor and knowing Google's history of releasing features that are, you know, coincidentally or not so coincidentally coinciding with a new product they're working on, you know, that helped me put two and two together. So um, that's why I'm confident that a lot of these features that I mentioned in that article are probably related to this upcoming product. So what what exactly uh, ties these things together? Like, is this is this an API, like a discovery of a, a certain uh, like API or a couple of APIs that would facilitate this? Like, what I guess where where I'm coming from is what is what would prevent Google from doing this prior to Android 13 that is now enabled with Android 13 and a, a future detachable tablet version of the Nest Hub. So I think the the two biggest um, blockers for releasing, you know, these for releasing Android as a smart display OS would be its support for you know big displays. Mm-hmm. Um, prior to Android 12L, there wasn't much in the way of you know adapting or native support for adapting applications to big to big screens and launching applications on big screens. Android 12L introduced a taskbar, which is being massively iterated on Android 13. And then um, in 13, we're seeing the introduction or the the revitalization of screensavers, which is a feature that was introduced all the way back in Android 4.2. That feature is getting a whole lot of love from Google this time around, none of which they've announced. It's all hidden under the hood. Mm -hmm. But um, if you were to peel back, you're able to see that a lot of the features that they're working on are proprietary to Google devices. So none of this, a lot of this won't be available in the AOSP build of Android 13, um, but it will be available in Google specific like system UI applications. So that, that makes you wonder why is it, why are these features being built specifically for Google products? It doesn't really make much sense for a smartphone to be docked and constantly displaying a screensaver, or in the same vein, it doesn't make much sense for a foldable to be docked and displaying a screensaver. Um, so that that makes you question, like, why is Google doing this? And then, oh, lo and behold, Google's working on a detachable tablet <laughs> slash uh, smart display Nest device, and you know the pieces, the puzzles pieces fit together perfectly. Yeah. So I guess the question that came up to me as I was kind of like reading through, you know both your article and the 9to5 Google article and kind of thinking about the synergies between these two efforts is we've been hearing about, you know, a a tablet coming, tablet hardware coming from Google. 
is this the tablet? Like, is is this the tablet, or are we, you know, or is there going to be a Pixel tablet alongside this? Like, I guess, I guess it depends on whether this is. I mean, if it's a smart display, it's not tablet first, but it is a tablet at the end of the day. If you know, if this is to be, if this is accurate, um, I don't know. What What do you think, Wynn? Do you think we're going to see multiple tablets coming from Google, or <laughs> or would this be it? Or I don't know. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, like we, we've kind of been waiting around long enough for all these devices. I don't know. I don't, I don't really see a cadre, a cadre, cadre, mm, whatever that <laughs> word is, a, a fleece, a, whatever the plural of tablets are. I don't really see it coming. I, I do think that that that, mm, that this is actually pretty interesting. This like detachable tablet, um, which is kind of like in and of itself a pretty unique large screen. So it might be, I, I think what would be really interesting to see is, you know, kind of like a standard, you know, tablet, but then also kind of taking the idea of large screens and really bending it. Because again, we're, we're kind of looking for <laughs> the killer use cases. Did I say bend it? Yeah. Did I say bend? Yeah. Like Beckham? I, I was, hope, I was hoping um, we were going to merge tab tablets and, um, and foldables. And foldables. And, <laughs> and foldables. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Well, That'd yeah. Great. Like maybe some kind of uh, just exploring the kind of the use case for large screens. And I think something that we've mentioned, but that is a good point that maybe doesn't get enough attention is smart displays, smart screens, and kind of alternatives to what we traditionally think of as tablets or even foldable. So I think it'd be interesting to see Google release at least some kind of, I guess, standards or kind of like killer, not killer, but unique use cases for the large screens that kind of like allow you to see what the possibilities are. Yeah. So well, yeah, I, I, I'm interested to see what this is in particular and how this shakes out. Well, yeah. I, and I, I echo that. I, I like, I want to see what the possibilities are, but also like the idea we've talked about, you know, I, I've dubbed 22 as the year of the tablet. Right. Like, I feel like we're gaining momentum here. Large screens like this whole kind of stuff happens. But if you think about it, if Google is going to reenter the space, are they just going to do what they did previously? Or are they going to try to do right. something different? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you and if you have an entire line of smart displays that already exist out there, how do you switch that up? How do you inject some energy into that line? You make a, de a detachable tablet display. Now you've got two, a two in one, so to speak. Right. Yeah. And it's like mm -hmm. I mean, that's really, really compelling. Um, yeah, it's so it's like it's drawing it's direct lines. Yeah, it's like yeah. drawing like Dinec I mean, like it's it's basically kind of mutating, hybridizing, kind of all the different like large screens, all the different experiences they have, and trying to make it coherent is maybe like a little bit too positive of a word, but yeah, really just kind of drawing a very distinct line. I mean, it's both a t it's both a it's both a smart display and a tablet. So I just think that's really interesting. It's not what I would have expected, but I like it. Yeah, well, I wonder how fully featured of a tablet it actually is. You know that's what I mean? Fair, if, it, yeah. if it's a smart display that's running on Android and can do some tablety things, or if it's like a full-on like Android 13 tablet that when it docks in that display, it kicks into you know the mode that turns it into like the full-fledged smart display. So it actually serves both both needs equally, you know, like if I put my pixel on the pixel stand, it automatically kicks into mm -hmm. a mode that kind of has some smart display, you know, functionality to it. Is that what we get, you know, here with this tablet? Um, uh, you know, obviously we don't, we don't know the answer to that, but. So I actually have a prediction in that vein. I, yes. I'm predicting that this device will run a full fledged version of Android 13, which would be a first for Google. Prior, previous Nest Hub displays, um, the first generation used to run um, a very, very stripped down version of Android, which they call the Google Glass platform. And then that was uh, migrated over to Fuchsia OS. But the second gen Nest Hub continues to run that stripped down version of Android called um, Google Cast. And I believe that's based on Android 7 Nougat, so it's ancient. And you, it's, it's so stripped down, it doesn't contain Google Mobile hmm. Services, it doesn't really contain anything that you could use to install regular Android applications on. Um, but I'm thinking this device will include um, a full-fledged build of Android 13 in order to facilitate you know, using it as an actual tablet that you can detach and you know, run your various applications on and then dock it and um, have it sit there as a smart display like you previously used to. And that's why they're adding a lot of these features. And I'm thinking that the way Google would market this product there'll be two um, use cases. The one will be the bedside use case. Mm -hmm. So um, you 
say I, I have a smart display, I have a second gen Nest Hub next to my bed, and that monitors my sleep. But once I get out of bed and, and leave my bedroom, you know, that display is just sitting there. It's useless to me. It's not doing anything when I'm outside of the room. Um, whereas this hypothetical, this detachable tablet, um, once it's sitting on the dock, and then once I'm out of bed, say it's a Sunday, I could detach it and just go around the house and just lazily sit on the couch and browse Reddit or whatever. And some of the features that are being added f- suggest that Google is trying to, you know, um, implement this bedside use case as well as implement the family room use case. Um, one of the APIs that I saw Google introduce or they're working on is called Ambient Context. And this API would allow applications to provide um, event detection for things like snoring and uh Snoring and what's it called? Coughing. So if you recall, the second gen Nest Hub actually supports something called sleep sensing. And one of the things that it detects is snoring and coughing. So my idea is that this API is being introduced in Android 13. So Google can re-implement this feature when it introduces this device. Because um, whatever feature, whatever way they implemented it before wouldn't work once they port full-fledged Android 13 over. And then in the media room use case, there are other features that point to Google wants this to be the center of the um, family room. There's a media tap to transfer feature that Google mm-hmm. is working on that would let you um, move your smartphone close to the device, and then you can transfer whatever media is being played back from your phone to the device. So if you have a tablet docked in your living room, you could just move your phone close to it, tap it, and then it would transfer playback from your phone to that um, device, which obviously will probably have much better speakers. Mm -hmm. And there are other APIs like cross-device calling, which Google has been working on. That would allow you to, whenever your phone receives an incoming phone call, it could seamlessly transfer the audio to the um, dock tablet, which doesn't have a telephony capability. So there are a lot of features that I've spotted in Android 13 that seem to hint at you know, supporting these various use cases in the bedroom and in the living room. And I think that's the direction Google is taking with these features. And maybe that's the way they'll implement it in this Nest product. Yeah. And part of what you wrote about, um, you know, alluded to the fact that like Android 12.1, we're used to that being the, oh, Google cares about tablets again. Here's a bunch of things (laughs) that are really great for tablets. That appears to be the foundation on top of some of the really cool you know, and in, more interesting kind of tablet um, influenced functionality that seems like is going to come with Android 13. So you could be right, Ron. You're the tablet. Although, have we had the year of the tablet before in Android world? Maybe, but you could have another year <laughs> of the tablet. I mean, it's yeah. a, every it's year. It's a new decade. A tablet. Yeah. It's a new decade, <laughs> right? Every every ten years, we can have at least one year yeah. that qualifies as the year's the ta- year of the tablet. So yeah. we're in that right now. <laughs> 